Okay. So now we are starting with the second part of additive and admixture. So before uh, going in detail regarding fosonic uh, admixture, uh, we should know a clear cut difference between additives and admixtures. So admixtures, they are added at the time of batch mixing. Uh, that is just immediately before or during the mixing. So batch mixing ka time add for them. And the time of grinding clinker means in the cement factory, you have to add this additive. So basically, uh, uh, we have discussed in part one these plasticizers that are just water reducing admixture. Uh, the super plasticizer, they are super water reducers, retarders that are used for retarding the effect of hydration, accelerators just to have the very high strength concrete in very uh, nominal time. Okay, so already we have discussed all this uh, in your first part. So now today uh, we are going to focus on this uh, pozzolonic or uh, mineral admixtures. So basically these are the pozzolonic material that we have to discuss in detail. Fly, silica, fume, GGBS and other pozzolonic material as well as this air and training admixtures. Okay. So uh, when we are talking about pozzolonic or mineral admixtures, they are siliceous or sil uh, aluminous material. Okay. Basically, they don't have property of binding means no cementaceous value. Unke kut ke andar cementaceous value nahi hota hai. But a, a finely divided form when in the presence of moisture means in the presence of water, uh, calcium hydroxide, which is liberated during the process. Uh, this uh, CaOH twice, this pozzolonic material in presence of uh, water and it will form a product responsible for possessing the cementaceous property. And the name is given to this matriash or the top found near Pozzola village. Uh, it is uh, that kind of material. That's why the name is given like Pozzolona. So generally it is uh, reacting uh, very slowly initially. Okay. So heat of hydration and strength development will be accordingly slow. So actually it is consuming the CaOH twice and it is not producing the CH twice. This is one of the best advantage that is of use of this uh, mineral admixtures. And it improves the durability of concrete paste by making the paste dense and impervious. So we have discussed this all uh, pozzolonas, that is natural pozzolonas and artificial pozzolonas. Okay, so this shell, clay, diatomaceous earth, volcanic ash, these are all natural one. Then pumicide, fly ash, uh, blast furnace leg, silica fume, rice husk, uh, this metacaline, then surki, these are artificial. So we are going in uh, detail for this uh, major three part that is silica fume, fly ash, and blast furnace leg in detail. So first is fly ash. So this is most widely used admixture all over the world. Okay. So how this fly ash is obtained? So fly ash in general, okay, so it is a finely divided residue resulting from the combustion of powdered coal. So here when uh, in the furnace, when you are uh, burning or in the combustion zone where uh, when you are a uh, 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 combustion of the powdered coal take place and uh, at that time the fly ash is generated fly ash generated first, okay and uh, that will uh, move, move along with the flue gases and collected in electrostatic precipitator basically this electrostatic precipitator is an air pollution control device okay so uh, this uh, device is generally added along with this uh, furnace okay so and in this electrostatic precipitator, this fly ash can be collected. So in UK, it is also called as pulverized fuel ash. So it is very common ingredient in concrete. So nowadays, uh, it is widely used all over the world in India also, particularly for making the high strength and high performance concrete. So what are the advantage of using this fly ash? All the advantage of pozzolonic materials that you can get with the help of uh, using this fly ash but main two advantages are technical advantage in the properties of concrete so to be modification in the properties in the fresh as well as in the hardened state that can be obtained by addition of fly ash. and second important thing from the environmental point of view that is environmental pollution control why because this fly ash 
so that you are using okay so at present in india it produces about approximately 180 million tons of fly ash per year and the disposal is a major concern so it's a serious environmental problem you can say and also this production of every ton of cement it emits uh, carbon dioxide around 0.87 ton and uh, in all 7% of the world's carbon dioxide emission that is a major uh, greenhouse gas okay and that is due to portland cement industry so if we are going on using the same cement without any uh, other material then you are more contributing towards greenhouse gas in the other way you can say okay so uh, due to this significant uh, contribution to environmental pollution and uh, due to this high consumption of the natural resource because of uh, limestone use karte in our normal cement so we cannot go on producing more and more cement by the conventional method so there is a need to economize the use of cement and one of the practical solution to economize this to replace the cement with supplementary cementitious material like fly ash or slag okay or silica film you can say so basically when you are using such uh, by products or uh, which are waste product you can say is the use of cement okay and also you can solve the problem related to environmental pollution so uh, there are two ways of using this fly ash that already you are knowing because at the factory it is called as a portland pozzolana cement so it is in the form of additive or second way you can use this fly ash as an admixture at the time of making concrete at the site itself so either in additive form or either in admixture form and this quality of the fly ash is governed by this is 3812 part of 2003 so uh, the good quality fly ash it should have high fineness means its size kam hona chahiye low carbon content and good reactivity because this reaction is very important because itself does not possess cementitious property wo bind nahi karega but wo kab bind karega when it will react with coh twice in presence of water to form it in the form of csh gel so good reactivity is very essential okay so if it, it is not having good reaction then It, it will. It is not of a uh, proper good kind of concrete. It cannot give. Okay, this ASTM broadly classify fly ash into two classes. First is class F. Okay, so normally this class F fly ash it is produced by burning the anthracite or bituminous coal, and usually it is having uh, less than five percent of CaO, and it has only this pozzolanic property. Okay, this uh, class F fly ash has pozzolanic property only, while this class C. uh this is normally produced by burning the lignite or subbituminous coal and some classes it may have content of cao which may be exceeding 10% also so these are the classes given by astm so what are the effect of this fly ash on the fresh concrete so generally uh, this reduction of temperature rise from uh, for 30% substitution of fly fly ash so here one graph is given temperature rise versus this age in days you can see this uh, if no fly ash is added then temperature rise is more and when 30% fly ash is uh, replaced by cement so then in that case there is a reduction in the temperature so for the mass concrete in work uh, where excessive temperature rise is not desirable so this can be very useful because there is no uh, uh, there is a reduction in in the temperature rise and that can be obtained by 30% substitution so effects of this fly ash on the hardened concrete so in hardened concrete it uh, initially it will uh, proceed slowly okay so in initial stage kya hoga ki its uh, strength would be lower than uh, the concrete without fly ash initial because this hydration process that will be uh, slow down so due to that initially it has uh, less uh, uh, value of your uh, strength but this uh, pozzolanic reaction at the end it would be give same strength but it will only proceed in a good way in the presence of enough moisture so first thing that you should keep in mind that uh, for the pozzolanic reaction to take place properly it should have enough presence of moisture for long time so therefore this fly ash concrete when whenever we have to use we have to give a enough curing time for longer period okay and this is the requirement because for this pozzolanic reaction you need constant water 
okay so you can say that it is most suitable for the under water structure kyunki pani to wahan pe rehta hi hai so it will derive full benefit of attaining the improved long term strength and water tightness so generally you can say that uh, for use in uh, your particularly uh, underwater uh, structure because water is available and uh, also it needs uh, water so uh, it is most suitable for the underwater structure also this durability of concrete it is also giving a good uh, quality of uh, flies if you are using it is making it a durable concrete and also it is offering the high resistivity to the infiltration of deleterious uh, uh, get reaction so you can say that in all the stages it is helping uh, either in fresh state or in the hardened state or as far as the durability is concerned and also so this, this environmental problem of flash now next micro silica also so this silica is uh, silica film is also called as micro silica or condensed silica so it is also again now end in the manufacturing of silicon or ferro silicon alloy by product hai so basically it is a amorphous type of silica dust iska koi form nahi hota hai iska particular shape nahi hota theek hai it is a amorphous type of silica dust mostly collected in the bag house filter again now this bag house filter it is a air pollution controlling device uh, so in that bag house you can collect it by resulting from the reduction of the high purity quartz with coal in the electric arc furnace okay so here how the silica film is produced so raw materials are given carbon coke coal wood chips and quartz okay so due to reduction of this quartz at a high smelting uh, smelting furnace temperature around 2000 degree so the silicon metal that is uh, the actual production and this by production uh, that by product that can be collected in bag house filter and that is called as silica film so here this is the furnace and here it is the bag house filter so from here you can collect your uh, silica film so now uh, here what is the peculiar characteristics of uh, silica film it is extremely fine its size bahut hi chota hai and this size may be less than 1 micron and average diameter may be around 0.1 micron so it is too less size so generally uh, average uh, size or the average diameter of the cement normal cement particle ordinary portland cement it may be around 10 micron okay on an average you can say it may be variable okay but on an average it is 10 so it is about 100 times smaller than the average cement particle so you can see how very high fineness is there so it is it is increasing tremendously is uh, surface area and this surface area may be 20000 meter square per kg as compared to this 230 to 300 meter square per kg of normal opc so uh, this higher fineness it is the most uh, important characteristic of this silica film so it itself uh, it does not possess the strength dramatically but it contribute to the strength prop, uh, property by being very fine pozzolanic material so this fineness is the major characteristics of silica film and it is creating very dense packing core uh, filler of the cement paste koi bhi pores khali nahi rahega voids nahi rahega so it's it's a very good uh, pore filler in the cement paste and this silica film in conjunction with the super plasticizer so this super plasticizer is high level water reducer because fineness uska zyada hai to usko zyada pani chahiye theek hai to wo zyada pani chahiye to aapka that will affect your strength so super plasticizer you have to add because it's a water reducer super water reducer you can say so silica film along with the super plasticizer it is the backbone of the modern modern high performance concrete and uh, this indian indian scenario is that silica film has become one of the necessary ingredient for making the high strength and high performance concrete nava base and again this is the pozzolanic action that is same it is much more reactive than ply ash or any other natural pozzolana because of its fineness so same this pozzolanic action would take place in all the pozzolanic material but 
but here it is more more reactive as compared to flyash or other natural pozzolana and also the silica film it is used in the construction of the bala worli link uh, mandra worli link uh, uh, project of mumbai okay so it has also influence on the fresh concrete as i told you that uh, water jada chahiye usko theek hai due to its high fineness so water demand increases in the production of the amount of the micro silica added jitna jyada uh, silica add karoge utna jyada pani jyada chahiye so this increase in water demand of concrete containing micro silica would be about 1% for every 1% of cement substituted jitna aap cement substitute karoge itna percentage jyada micro silica the size of 20 mm of aggregate containing 10% micro silica per meter cube so this to be balanced and how you can balance it by adjusting the aggregate grading and using a label water reducers so silica concrete that is high strength or high performance concrete containing micro silica show is have shown that 60 to 80 mpa that can be obtained in mm square and that will uh, improvement in the durability also okay so strength as well as durability aspect both can be increased properly next is gran uh, ground granulated blast furnace slag so basically here it is also a by product but it is the by product of iron and steel making industry okay so uh, how this uh, ggbs or ggbfs it, it is obtained so here in the uh, uh, blast furnace okay uh, when uh, this molten slag this uh, quenching of the molten slag uh, in the blast furnace uh, in water or steam it will produce at the bottom this a uh, granulated blast furnace so here you can say it is a granulated slag or glassy uh, crystal of a granulated blast furnace slag is obtained uh, during the uh, quenching of molten slag from the blast furnace in presence of water or steam so this glassy and granulated product when we are drying first usko dry kar dena hai and then again you have to grind it so allow it to grinding mill and again grind grind it then it will become ground granulated blast furnace slag which is called as ggbs okay so jo bhi aapka glassy uh, slag mila hai at the bottom uh, of the by product of this uh, particular steel making industry by quenching the molten slag in the presence of water or steam it has to be grind and then it is called as ggbs so this granulated material when it is ground further it has size less than 45 micron and having surface specific surface area of 400 to 600 meters square per kg and this chemical composition of this uh, blast furnace leg it is similar to cement clinker cement clinker jaisa hi uska chemical composition rehta hai okay and its performance uh, basically uh, depend upon its chemical composition its glass content and fineness of grind kitna fineness uh, of grinding grinding hair that will also affect its performance okay so generally this indian steel uh, production capacity it is estimated that it will rise by 300 million tons by year 2030 from current capacity of about About 140 million ton. Now, if 140 million ton, है उससे बढ़ के almost double हो जाएगा, ठीक है? So uh, this uh, blast furnace land, it would rise to around 27 million tons. This is the source that is the uh, FICCI that is speaking. So a huge quantity of this uh, land that would be generated, and if you can utilize it in the uh, pro uh, production of concrete and in the form of this GGBS, then it may be useful okay so environmental point of view all are very useful so this uh, performance of ggbs in concrete in fresh and hardened state both it is very important and this quality of slag is governed by this is 12089 of 1987 uh, and then manganese oxide percentage uh, sulfide sulfur glass content these ratios that are to be maintained properly so performance of this ggbs Uh, hardened concrete, both they are having their effect. Okay, so replacement of 
सीमेंट विद दिस जी जी बी एस इट विल रिड्यूज द यूनिट वाटर कंटेंट इसमें वाटर कंटेंट कम हो जाएगा टू ऑप्टेन द नेसेसरी स्लम मीन्स वर्केबिलिटी फॉर सेम वर्केबिलिटी वाटर कंटेंट विल भी रिड्यूज एंड वाटर कंटेंट विल भी रिड्यूज मीन्स इट इज गुड फॉर स्ट्रेंथ एस्पेक्ट uh this uh, uh, reduction of unit water content will be more pronounced with the increase in slag content jitna jyada and fineness of slag okay and uh, this is because of the surface configuration and particle shape of the slag being different than the cement particle okay composition is same but surface configuration is different from the cement particle and in addition water used for mixing is not immediately lost तुरंत वो पानी लॉस नहीं हो जाता एज द सरफेस हाइड्रेशन ऑफ द स्लैग इज स्लाइटली स्लोअर देन दैट ऑफ द सीमेंट सो हियर आल्सो दिस रिएक्शन वुड बी स्लोअर एंड रिडक्शन ऑफ ब्रीडिंग सो दिस रिडक्शन ऑफ ब्रीडिंग इज नॉट सिग्निफिकेंट विद द स्लैग ऑफ 4000 सीएम स्क्वायर पर ग्राम फाइननेस बट सिग्निफिकेंट बेनिफिशियल इफेक्ट इन द रिडक्शन ऑफ ब्रीडिंग कैन बी ऑप्टेन इफ द स्लैग फाइननेस इज ऑफ द ऑर्डर ऑफ 6000 सीएम स्क्वायर पर gram okay so in hardened state it reduces the heat of hydration refinement of the pore structure pore structure properly uh, fill up ho jata hai and then reduce the permeability to the external agencies to kisi ko bhi it's not permeable to the external agencies okay so also it will increase the resistance to chemical attack so in both the state it is very useful now next is air entraining admixtures so this air entrained concrete is made by mixing a small quantity of air entraining agent or by using the air entraining cement so either you can use in the form of cement or agent so what will happen when you are adding such agents in your uh, uh, particular concrete then uh, this air entraining agents incorporate millions of non collisioning air bubbles to ek dusre ke sath collide nahi hote means nazdik nahi aate aise bubbles so here you can see when you are adding this air entraining admixtures number of bubbles that are formed and that are non collisioning means ek dusre se takrayenge nahi and which will act as a flexible wall bearings and that will modify the properties of plastic concrete means fresh concrete regarding workability segregation bleeding and finishing quality of the concrete so both the state it will affect all this uh, formation of this non collisioning air bubbles and it will also modify the properties of hardened concrete related to resistance to frost action and permeability so you can say that all these uh, mineral admixture or this pozzolanic materials they will affect fresh as well as hardened concrete so here this air void is present in the concrete that can be uh, of two types first is the entrained air entrained air means intentionally incorporated you have added intentionally like by addition of this uh, air entraining cement or by addition of the air entraining agent so and it is called as the an entrained air means aapne intentionally dala and second is entrapped air entrapped air is voids present in the concrete due to insufficient compaction so that is not desirable okay so entrapped air and entrained air that are two different things so this entrained air is a minute spherical bubbles of size ranging from 5 micron to 80 micron and distributed evenly in the entire mass of the concrete because we are intentionally adding to modify the fresh and hardened uh, concrete's property while this entrapped air it may be of any shape and size because uh, we have not intentionally added it is present due to insufficient compaction so it may be different shape shape and size normally ranging from 10 micron to 1000 micron and more than that also mass so uh, they are not uniformly distributed throughout the concrete mass so here uh, these are the different air entraining agents which are widely used for making the air, air entrained concrete so first is nat natural wood resin animal and vegetable table fat and oil what can be used so this tallo it is nothing but the animal uh, fat or olive oil their fatty acids such as stearic and oleic acid that can be used various wetting agents such as alkali salts or sulfated and sulfonated organic compound that can be used water soluble soaps 
of uh, resin acids and uh, animal and vegetable fatty acids that can be used and miscellaneous materials such as sodium salts of uh, uh, petroleum sulfonic acid hydrogen peroxide and aluminum powder so so many uh, this animal and uh, vegetable fat and oil or natural food resins that can be utilized as as air entering agent now following are the factors affecting the amount of air entrainment so sabse pehla type and quantity different capability of formation of bubbles with different uh, properties then water cement ratio definitely you mix kar rahe ho uska temperature kya hai kaun sa type ka cement mein aap dal rahe ho influence of compaction this agent so sometimes it may be possible that so how it will uh, react at that particular point it is also equally dependent on the properties of concrete so this air entrainment will affect uh, directly following three properties of the concrete ye teen property pe direct affect karta hai increasing the resistance to freezing and thawing now what is this freezing and thawing so normally in the colder countries this freeze thaw occur uh, regularly when this uh, water continuously sipping into the cracks the per temperature thoda high hoga to pani continuously ye rock structure wagera mein that will come and when there is a cold temperature it will freezes so when it will freeze it will expand and eventually it is breaking the rock apart and this is called as the freeze and thaw so generally this will increase the resistance if you are going for this air entraining cement or uh, that agent then it will increase the resistance to this freezing and thawing also it will improve workability but there is a certain reduction in strength is obtained due to this presence of this air so this incidentally air entrainment will also affect the properties of concrete in the following ways okay so first is reduce the tendencies of segregation grading and lighter so all these three so that is segregation uh, bleeding that you are knowing uh, bleeding is a uh, presence of water uh, that can be obtained at top in the freshly uh, prepared concrete if there is a presence of uh, this uh, aggregates then it is called as uh, uh, segregation and if uh, in the water along with uh, water the cement is also coming on the top surface then it is called as a lighter so all this will reduce all this tendency so in the fresh state it is uh, very good then decrease the permeability permeability is also decrease resistance to resistance to chemical attack also reduction in sand content is obtained also it will improve the pressability and early finishing can be possible also it reduce the cement content cost and heat of hydration reduces the unit weight also uh, uh, it will reduce the water content also reduces the alkali aggregate reaction and also reduces the modulus of elasticity so these are all the uh, effect that can be obtained on the properties of concrete but only one effect that is the reduction of strength can be obtained so here this is the uh, summary of all the admixtures that we have learned so accelerating okay so all the accelerators uh, if they are added with water reducer then it is called as accelerating water reducing admixtures then retarding so that are retarders then water reducing that are reducing also retarders can be mixed with the water reducers then air entraining also some, some admixtures that are used for the water proofing and then during the pumping operation then we have learned about the super plasticizers there are so, so many ranges of plasticizers which are used and one more that is we have studied that is pozzolanic there is all use of this plies silica fluum and uh, uh, ggbs now calcium clay diatomaceous also other uh, there are so many other uh, admixtures that can be used so this cementaceous this uh, it is a hydraulic lime slag that is ggbs so these are all uh, that are are included in your syllabus and uh, you should know in detail so here this is just the summary for the different purpose this uh, admixtures can be used for the retarding operation air entrainment water reduction for the same workability accelerating then shrinkage reduction then super plasticizers 
also it will inhibit the corrosion so this way uh, these admixtures that are widely used in our uh, concrete for modifying the properties of concrete in the different stages and that you should know properly